guys, welcome to episode number three of the off season. Today, judging by the title, we're gonna be talking about nutrition. So nutrition is something that a lot of powerlifters, for whatever reason, I don't know why, like do not pay attention to at all. I've seen so many different threads now and posts of like powerlifters just like kind of fucking off when it comes to actually fueling their body and making sure that they're getting everything they need in order to be the best athlete they can inside the gym. It's pretty shocking and I think what it really comes down to is lifters not understanding the difference like good nutrition actually makes. And I know because I've experienced it. When I eat like shit, I'm not counting macros, I'm just kind of like, you know, chilling and bullshitting. Like the difference of not getting all my protein in and a, su a sufficient amount of carbs in makes a complete difference from what I actually do. I feel so strong and powerful when I'm hitting my protein goals and eating like probably like 200 grams plus of protein with maybe like 200 grams of carbs. The way my body feels, like, I don't even know how to explain it. I wake up and I literally can feel the PRs running through my body. And it sounds so weird. But I've heard other people talk about this as well. Like, when they start dialing on the nutrition, they just feel strong all the time. They don't feel as beat. And when you're properly fueling your body and recovering, it gives you a chance. It gives you a fighter's chance to feel good the following session. And I don't understand why most powerlifters don't understand that. Like, if you eat like shit, let's say one day, I have a huge squat day, um, and it takes a lot out of me. Then for that whole day, I'm not recovering at all because I'm just eating like shit. I'm eating chips, I'm drinking, um, doing all that kind of stuff. I'm not gonna be able to recover properly. And if I now I flip the coin and I do it the proper way and I eat all the protein I need to, eat all the carbs, sleep, and all that kind of stuff, it makes the biggest difference. Because I wake up the next day and I feel as though like I didn't just do like a whole crazy squat session the day before. Um, so with that being said, I'm gonna take you guys through full day eating. You guys are gonna see everything that I eat that goes into my body. Um, I actually do have to go grocery shopping today. Spent the weekend in Miami with the boys. It was <laughs> it was crazy. It feels good to get back in routine. I'll put a little bit. Typically I weigh it out, but as I was talking, I just remembered and uh, probably just missed a little gram here and there. So I'll just throw in a little bit extra. But this is two scoops of whey protein from BPN Subs. Just got code real small if you guys want to save yourself. A little coin here and there, especially if you're a first time customer. Uh, so this is gonna come out to 50 grams of protein to start the day. I like to work out fasted, um, but as a strength athlete, I now understand probably not the best thing to do. So give myself a fighting chance to number one, have the best workouts. Probably within the, my best interest to eat a little bit of something. So um, this is kind of like a compromise. It's liquid, but it is two scoops of whey protein, which is 50 grams of uh, protein. Also, this is clutch, this little uh, shaker thing kind of messed up right now, but super clutch. So I'm sure a lot of you guys that follow me are powerlifters, or maybe not. I feel like I'm not like the powerlifters powerlifter. This past weekend, I think I mentioned the last video, this past weekend or week was nationals. Normally, I would be competing in it. I haven't missed a national since 2017. This year I did not compete. So I was just like kind of watching the playing field, seeing what was happening. Um, I had my predictions and pretty much everything that I said would happen basically happened. Um, like in my head, like I don't, I don't like talking about shit on camera because I feel like a lot of stuff gets taken out of context. So I just kind of like, you know, talk to my confidence about it. But I feel as though with my particular weight class, when I was watching, a lot of the stuff that I said was gonna happen, like ended up happening. And I said it months ahead. Like I have this thing where like lifters, I have this take and um, <laughs> the people that know, know. But I say it like this, the further out you are, the bigger everyone's chest is, right? So when you're five, six months out, motherfuckers are like, I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z. This is my year. I'm big dog. Like I'm really him and I'm gonna show him type shit. And then maybe about like, you know, eight weeks out, everyone just goes quiet. You don't, you don't hear shit from nobody. And then literally like the day happens and then everyone has excuses as to why they didn't perform the way they thought they would perform. Um, happens every single year and um, yeah. Basically what happened. And then with, uh, I mean with Perk, Austin Perk, he's a 75, he's a weight class below, he's a weight class below me. And he out totaled the class that I would have been competing in. Um, that's basically what I had him at. I mean, I think it's one thing to think that someone could do something, but they actually do it's another thing. So it's like, he probably had one of the greatest power of performances of all time, like in a vacuum when you look at him competing at nationals. So, cause I told, I told myself, I'm like, I told people, I was like, if he doesn't total above 830, I don't wanna, like, I don't wanna hear it. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, he told 850, he had a great performance and it was amazing. And um, it's one of those performances, honestly speaking, brings like the competitive nature outside of me. Like, it makes me want to be even better, right? Um, 
I want to work harder if possible. Like I want to make sure every single stone is unturned. Uh, is is not turned, unturned. I think you're right. I think I was right the first time. I wouldn't know. No. Yeah, I just want to make sure that I'm doing everything I can in order to make sure that, I mean, I don't, I, I it's just, it just motivates me. I'm getting like riled up, I'm getting geeked right now. But no, he, he did his thing. And then I think um, the other weight classes, I mean, what happened um, with those, I think everything was pretty straightforward in regards to like what I had in mind. But I will be diving into the specifics of what I actually think of my podcast, the Better Take Podcast, filming tomorrow. So I'll get like really detailed with that. <laughs> That's thick. But yeah, I, <laughs> I feel like a lot of this shit that I thought was gonna happen, happened. And um, yeah, I don't wanna say anything else that I wanna get in trouble. <laughs> I feel like anytime I make any comments, it just becomes a whole thing. Uh, yeah, I thought I thought a lot of the stuff that happened was what was gonna happen. Um, some shockers here and there, but for the most part, casual shit. I've been through this like six different times. Well, five times and then six without me actually competing. Like I said, people talk talk about what they're gonna do, and then like when the time happens, you'd be wondering what happened. <laughs> You know what I mean? So anyways, let me chug this and then we're gonna head on to the gym to do some heavy squatting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Damn right, bro. 4 a.m. I'm just getting started. For my birthday, I threw me a surprise party. Reminiscing about the trap playing the first quarter. My life changed when I had my first Shit. That, Shit, that was funny. That was funny. Now you see why I be coming to the session so geek. Like I just talked to Xander. Lil Xander said I gotta go crazy. He did. He 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 did say it. And then his dad came in. He's like, yo, like what you want today? I'm like, no, nah, I'm, I'm you know I'm gonna do my thing. He's like, all right, I'm just making sure because I heard like a little, you know, a little motherfucker out told you. I was like, damn. All right. That's what the fuck we on today. Then, I but I like that because you know. That's how you're going to get the best version of me in the gym. Let, let someone do something good. To spread out the word. Mm -hmm. I was too dead determined. Rap game needed refurbished. I was the top with no service. Watches and are playing verses. They in the bushes, they lurking. My got a call to insurgents. She wanna fuck with a purpose. I gotta juggle my urges. Got a couple departments. Closet built like a department. Double up couple the department. How I give all of my sermons. When our pride was low, looking at the world like, where do we go? All right, so uh, top set was good. Like I said, I like being motivated. I like having like a singular focus for the workout. And just with all the talk of like, you know, top lifters and shit like that, it reinvigorates me to kind of get going a little bit. But now here comes the dirty part of the workout. That was like the flashy shit. Now we got a three by seven <laughs> on squat. But the thing about squat is that you have to have that desire. It's like playing defense in the NBA or, or football or basketball, football. Like you gotta, I look at squat as defense. Like you gotta want to do it. You have to have that desire. So um, I've often noticed that when you come inside of the gym and you don't want to squat, that weight's gonna bury you. 
But if you come in in attack mode and you're like have that effort and desire, it makes the squat session that much easier and it gives you an opportunity to hit good lifts. So let's attack. Let's not like think like, oh shit, we got sevens. Just think, oh shit, we got sevens. Finished up with the workout. Really good, successful session. Like I said, uh, just got geeked. You know, had the right people in the gym, had the right storm, had the perfect storm to have a good session. Now, let's focus on actually like what we're gonna be focused on for the video, and that's like just nutrition. So we're here at HEB. Y'all motherfuckers outside of Texas probably don't have an HEB. Sucks for y'all. Y'all probably be shopping at like Target and where do y'all where where do motherfuckers outside of Texas be shopping at for groceries? Like Publix, from Publix. Miami. Some nah. places got Kroger. Cap. We got Kroger too, that shit cow. HEB stands for here, everything's better. So we finna, we're finna slide into HEB. I'm probably about to drop a cool 300, I'm not gonna lie. Mm. Yeah, I know, yeah. But it's mostly because the amount of meat that I, <laughs> amount of meat I be getting. <laughs> I be getting a lot of meat because I should be running out. But I be getting expensive meat like salmon, lobster, steak, I gotta, I gotta chill out. Hey, you boo. Yeah. Then I put my grind on it. Put the iron on them if a nigga my opponent. My code 500, I don't put no miles on it. I was running wild, homie, with 500 thousand on me. Going to the driller, bust the AP, yeah. Sliding on the water like a jet ski, yeah. I'm trying to fuck you on your bestie, yeah. Chop up with this girl, so do not test me, yeah. Rick Flair, drip, go. I know people are like, I should probably start making my own rice, but. The convenience of the, the ready minute rice is so good. Pop that bitch in for about a minute. Ready to go. Hop in the Bentley coupe and blow the brains out of it. We're not the same, my nigga, my nigga, we found enough to fish. Hey, with your brain, yeah, we bought you like it's an auction, ain't it? Get the chopper, 100 round total, like it's a cockleless. I made it your man to toward the means, I had to get it. My shooter be begging, please, you ready to whack a nigga. I gave a nigga a dummy, I had to cap a nigga. I'm giving your whole away, like she a rapper, nigga. Let me show you guys everything we got from the grocery store. Keep in mind, um, these are my groceries, so I'm not going to encourage you guys to get these groceries. Everything came out to like $230, um, so I'm just going to run through everything. <laughs> First thing I'm going to show you guys is the lobster we got. So I get lobster because one of my favorite meals at the moment is uh, steak, which I forgot the steak. Steak and lobster. Just realized that I forgot the steak. But steak and lobster. One of my favorite meals. Uh, I usually eat that in dinner time. I got kimchi. I pair this with either my salmon bowl or my uh, ground beef and rice. Broccoli, mixed veggies, uh, Brussels sprouts, one of my favorite vegetables of all time. Lettuce for salad, or not lettuce, but you know, romaine lettuce. Uh, and then where's the other salad ingredients? We also have the sliced almonds with cranberries. And then we have the croutons over here. I said this in the grocery store, but jasmine rice, minute, <laughs> minute jasmine rice. Once again, I don't have a rice cooker, it takes too long. I like the minute jasmine rice because it's a lot more convenient. Uh, almond butter clusters, which is like just granola. Use that for my uh, protein shakes, blend it up, tastes really good. Dressing or low calorie dressing, it's the uh, Bolton, Bolt House Farm dressing. I got that. Cilantro, avocado, and creamy Caesar. Uh, we got ground beef over here. This is usually post-workout meal or lunch. And then we got salmon. Easy work. And then we also have eggs and egg whites. So um, this is breakfast. So I'm gonna make uh, protein pancake. Oh, sorry. Also got some fruit. And um, 
some green onions. So, uh, and bananas. Anyways, time to make breakfast. I'm super hungry. This is, I mean, it would be the first meal of the day because I only had a protein shake in the morning to start my workout. It's currently, what is it like? Like two. Yeah, 208. Typically around when my first meal comes a little bit later, but it usually comes a little bit earlier, but today's workout started a little bit late. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna make two servings of Kodiak protein pancakes. And then also I'm gonna have um, a decent amount of egg whites with two whole eggs. So that's gonna be breakfast. I typically like to keep my meals at about like 50 grams of protein each, if not more. Uh, it helps me segment and know how much protein I'm getting throughout the day. So first quote unquote meal of the day was the protein shake, which is two scoops is 50. And then the second meal is gonna put me at um, 100 grams of protein for the day with probably like 60 grams of uh, protein in. Um, so that's typically how I like to segment my meals. And then I like to have like about four meals a day. Um, so around I'm gonna get 200 grams of protein with about maybe like 40-ish to 50 grams of fat and then about um, 200 grams of uh, carbs. So that's basically how I break down my off-season nutrition and macros. Um, I don't count super duper on point um, but for the most part, like when you cook your own food, um, you're going to stay within, for me personally, I'm going to stay within my weight class and within range to do my water cut and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's very, very important to me. So I'm super hungry, make breakfast and then put all this shit up. Uh, but let's get cooking. All right, chef, what I have prepared for you today is um, some protein pancakes um, cooked in some butter. And then we also have egg whites with two whole eggs and uh, some, some Korean spicy sauce garnished with some green onions and parsley. Oh, looks good. Let's try it out. Pancakes look beautiful. Beautiful pre presentation. Mmm, very good. Pancakes are nicely cooked. You can tell the butter really elevates the dish. Try some of the eggs. Okay, eggs, nicely cooked. It's a tough one. Uh, give that dish a uh, four out of five. Good job. That shit is busting though. Feels good to have the first meal of the day. So I'm gonna knock this down. Uh, it's 2.45 now. Probably get my lunch in like around four-ish, maybe five. And then dinner around eight to nine. So yeah, about to listen to the Breakfast Club, catch up on some current events, answer some texts and emails, because I just looked at my phone and holy shit, got a lot of messages. Um, <laughs> and just enjoy, enjoy this little cool down. Got a shower too, man. Grocery shopping and eating after the workout before I actually get to shower. It's pretty sick. I lot to you guys, Duhon has been royally dismissed. It didn't make sense to have him here like all day as I was eating. I mean, he has like a family to tend to now. He has like a son and a wife. So um, we have lunch served. This is the second meal of the day. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what this is. So this is going to be salmon, two servings worth of salmon, uh, kimchi, green onions, white rice, uh, mixed vegetables. And I believe that's it. They also have this sriracha mayo um, sauce place on top. And then I'm also gonna put like a drizzle of teriyaki along with uh, maybe some of the sriracha sauce I'm gonna show you guys. This sauce is so good. It's like this Korean gochujang. I don't wanna mess that up. Korean chili sauce, basically. Uh, I get it from H-E-B. I don't know if you guys have it at your place too, but um, I was like kind of like detailing everything I've eaten throughout the day. So breakfast or like the first quote unquote meal was uh, the protein shake, 50 grams of protein. And then the second meal was two servings of the Kodiak cakes and then two whole eggs along with like, probably like, I think five or six servings of the egg whites. So I would say that my protein intake right now is gonna be about like 150 um, after this particular meal. And then I'm gonna follow back up with my dinner. And I'm also going to let you guys in on the amount of water that I've been drinking. So I had probably like around, I wanna say 60 ounces of water so far. I was gonna drink some Mio, but I don't know about y'all. Y'all can talk about it in the, just in the comment section. I feel like whenever I drink Mio or like water, what is it called? Water, uh, um, water enhancers. 
Like the water enhancers just doesn't feel like it digests properly in my stomach and it feels like it sits a little bit more. It's almost like you're just not drinking soda, but it's like, I don't know. I don't know the science on it, but it doesn't feel like I'm drinking water. It's water, but it's like different. I don't know. That's just me. Drink about maybe another, I'm gonna finish this and then drink another one of these bad boys. This is about 40 ounces of water. Um, and that should do it for my water take for the, for the day. I um, just wanna make sure that I'm hydrated and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna down this, wolf it gas and then um come back to you guys for dinner all right so um it's currently 7 45 7 47 p.m to be exact in between work answering um a bunch of emails looking for new places for the gym uh a lot of different stuff right but taking a quick break dinner is about to be finished currently watching this youtube channel super addicting it's called infographics show really good YouTube channel like literally like information about like stuff you'll probably never use about the government's world uh world wars like why nuclear Armageddon is unstoppable like look at the stuff that I'm seeing right here bro like the kind of stuff that's on here is just hilarious but I usually watch this while I'm eating meals either this or like the breakfast club the videos that they drop or like maybe even some shit about like um sports and all that which is like first take, undisputed, all of that. But um, let me tell you guys how the rest of the day is gonna work out. So I'm gonna eat dinner. Dinner is gonna consist of steak with lobster, mixed vegetables and rice. Uh, and then something that I particularly struggle with when it comes to dieting is my sweet tooth. I have a huge sweet tooth. I'm not like a snack guy. Um, I like If I'm on, I don't really wanna be eating a lot of cheat meals like that. But what gets me is the sweet tooth. Typically when I eat dinner, I don't know what it is. It almost looks like my body's like, yo, it's time to eat something sweet. I mean, obviously I can't do that. So what I do is to end the day, I have another protein shake. It's gonna be two scoops of whey protein, um, grounded up granola. So the granola that I bought earlier today, bl uh, blend that up, put some honey in there. Nice, it, it just like, it quenches that sweet tooth feeling. Plus it's nutritious, like 50 grams of protein and I get to max out and get my, all the protein that I need. So that's two, it's like 100 grams worth of protein. Sorry, nah, you're good. Let me, um, weak ass. <sighs> weak ass fire detectors. Anyways, uh, the, um, the evening protein shake usually helps kind of like take care of that sweet tooth. So yeah, that's gonna be the evening. The way that I'm sitting is wild. <laughs> but, yeah, good day hitting uh, the macros and all that kind of stuff. You know, I was gonna play Kingdom Hearts today, but honestly, I didn't wanna put myself in a bad mood. I have been replaying Kingdom Hearts for those of you guys that know, you know, no need to explain it. Uh, I just got to this part at the end of the game that's super hard and I get really frustrated. And I don't feel like ending my night on some frustration and being pissed off. So yeah. But let me put on some infographics and then I'll get back to you guys whenever dinner is actually ready and I can show you guys what that looks like. Ooh. And we gonna have the salad. So what I'm about to show you guys is probably gonna be completely unrelatable, but like I said, I'm trying to show you guys what I eat <laughs> literally on a daily basis. I almost feel like, what's that uh, one clip from the Boondocks where it's like, uh, Chestnificent is like going through and it's like showing his crib and he's like kind of like stunning on motherfuckers. Like, I ain't gonna lie, I'm about to stun on y'all with this meal because this shit is crazy. It's like a five-star restaurant type shit. Um, okay, so what we have here before I show you guys is steak, lobster, rice, mixed veggies, and a full salad. Before you start hating, like, I had this cooked for me. <laughs> so... <laughs> She's smiling in the background. But uh, so what we have is a salad. I mean, pretty straightforward. This is actually super easy to make. Croutons, um, romaine lettuce, and then the cranberry, it's like mixed. It's cranberries with almonds, I believe. And then we also have, and then also with the main dish, we have steak, lobster, rice, mixed veggies with a lemon wedge on the side. <laughs> Nah, 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 I ain't gonna lie. I'll understand how I get some thumbs down because like, that shit don't look right. That shit look like I just ordered it from fucking Steak 48 and put it on a plate and told y'all that I made this shit. But it's like, nah, like, I really be eating this on a daily basis, on a nightly basis. This is my dinner. 
And if you follow me on IG, you already know I post this shit like all the time, but this is my dinner. So I would say like average things out. This is two servings worth of steak, by the way. So this is skirt steak. Nothing too crazy. It's not like I ordered like the Wagyu or some shit. Uh, so that's two servings of the of the skirt steak with uh, one serving of the lobster. I'd say right there, probably about like 50, 60 grams of protein. We'll say 50, just keeping it kind of light, just to kind of like stay within that range of 50 grams per serving for every time I sit down and eat. Um, so 50 grams of protein shake in the morning, 50 grams of breakfast, 50 grams with the salmon bowl. I'd say like probably like 48, but 50, let's say 50. Um, wait, wait, 50, 50, 50, that's 150. Now this is about to be another 50, it's 200. I think, yeah. And then to cap it off, we gonna have dessert later in the evening right before I go to bed. And it's 8 p.m. So we're gonna eat this and then uh, finish up a little bit more work. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm eating good, man. I, I ain't gonna lie. Like if y'all wanna hate, I understand. I completely get it. This isn't normal. It is what it is. But these are some of the things that I be consuming to make sure that my body's at tip top shape um, to get ready to live the most weight possible. I don't know why people slept on these shorts. These are so cool. I even got a pair of them on right now for today's workout. Now it's time to see what shoes we're gonna wear for today's workout. I was thinking paint. Low key, I might just go with the old and tested the Nike Terraformers, the off-whites. Who knows, let's we'll see. Sorry, excuse the mess, bro. Like it's just, it's been going crazy. But I also wanna show you guys this. This is a plaque for reaching 100,000 sales on the website. Pretty cool. But <clears throat> let's figure, yeah, let's figure out what we got to wear shoe wise. I would say that these kicks, I mean, these are like one of my staples. Yeah, I'll just run it. Cause we're going to do bench and shoulders, have a quick workout and then obviously recording the podcast as well. But this is going to be the end of the video. Let me go ahead and put this down. So I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Whenever, uh, let me sit down in my chair here. Whenever ugh, I ate my dinner, and I drink my, my protein shake, I knocked out immediately. And I'm not exactly sure if it's like because of stress or what, but man, the type of sleep that I was having was phenomenal. And uh, usually when I'm stressed, I sleep really well, <laughs> which is funny. So um, you think that like, because you're stressed, you're not gonna be able to sleep. But me, I'm the opposite. Whenever I like stress sleep, it's kind of weird. Maybe it's like an escape tactic or escape thing. It's the next day, fell asleep, but I just wanted to give you guys an insight as to what I be eating on a daily basis. Like that's literally, it doesn't really deviate much. Like lunch may change a little bit um, <clears throat> from a uh, fish type of bowl. What was it like a, yeah, like a salmon bowl to like maybe ground beef, you know? Um, but yeah, that's, that's typically what I eat on a daily basis. I woke up this morning feeling jacked and skinny. I already drank my first protein shake of the day because I'm about to head on to the gym and the routine is going to continue. It's going to continue to continue. So to give you guys an understanding, I intuitively eat. In my off season, all of those foods, like I add a lot of additives. I add like sauces. When you saw my salad, I had croutons, cranberries, and almonds. Um, even my protein shakes are filled with uh, almonds and um, granola and honey and all that kind of stuff. But generally speaking, I'm getting my protein and somewhat of my carb intake in. Fats may be off here and there because I'm adding so many different things to each, uh, each and every single meal. Now, when I'm in season and I'm about to compete, my diet's gonna completely change because I'm not gonna be adding all the little things. I need to be tracking every single little thing that's going into my body to make sure that um, I'm losing the weight. But when I'm like in a gain-taining type of phase, uh, it's not as important. I have more leeway to do different things. But whenever I get more serious, then obviously it's time to add, not add, but subtract all those little additives. Um, but in the off season, you have to take your nutrition very seriously. Like I've seen so many people just fuck around when it's off season time, which is absurd to me because off season is when you actually get better. When you peak for a meet, you're just showcasing everything that you did during the off season. So if you're fucking around during the off season and you start peaking, you're gonna notice, you're like, damn, I didn't get that much stronger. And then you're gonna be like, why didn't I get that much stronger? And you're gonna start thinking like, you're probably gonna start blaming your coach or blaming your peak but it's like, no, bro, during the off season, you didn't do shit. So you made minimal progress and you didn't really train very hard in the gym. And then when you were outside of the gym during the parts, when you're at home and eating, you were fucking around. You wasn't letting your body recover properly. And that 
bleeds into your training. So nutrition and training go hand in hand. I feel great right now. I feel like I could bench like a thousand. I mean, obviously I can't, but I feel like I could bench for real. Um, and that's because I recovered properly. Like yesterday, I, I got a good night's rest, had all the protein I could, and I feel amazing. Versus like if I ate some bullshit and I woke up this morning and then like I just feel wrecked. It makes a big difference. So think about compounding those days for months on end. My off season is gonna be a full year when everything is said and done. So just imagine if I took care of business for a full year, what I could actually achieve. That's why you see me hitting all these PRs. That's why you see me progressing as progressing the way that I progress because I take care of the variables that I take care of on top of working extremely hard in the gym. And when you keep doing that over and over and over again, you'll be surprised where you're gonna land at. I think a lot of times whenever people watch me, they think I'm very uh, unrelatable to a certain extent. But I mean, at the same time, you have to look at yourself and it's like, how, how dedicated are you? Um, if anything that you can take from my videos is dedicate yourself and see how far you could go. And oftentimes I think people just get obsessed with where I'm at right now and don't realize the little things that I do on a daily basis to make sure, or to, to put me in position that I'm at now. So keep doing that and, and keep grinding. But um, before I close this video, I want to thank everyone that has been reaching out to me. And um, I guess like, <laughs> I don't know how to put it, but like sharing their condolences with me or some shit. Like I are just like telling me to keep my head up and stuff. I had a lot of friends reach out after the last video um, to kind of just like see where my head's at mentally and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not gonna lie, like it's it's solid. I'm not in the greatest headspace just because there's a lot going on. And I'm pretty stressed, but at the same time too, I have my days where I just reflect and I'm super thankful as to where I'm at in life. Like I'm thankful to have these problems because I, I got to a certain point that allowed me to have these problems in the first place. Uh, so I wanna thank everyone that's reached out and said their um, well wishes and all that kind of stuff. Corrupted, we'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens with Corrupted, but I've kind of accepted whatever could happen and will happen with Corrupted because at the end of the day, um, I, I've had a great journey with it and I'm, I'm just thankful that I even got to live out my dream if it was for only two years or three years. So anyways, time to go training, time to get better. Um, I'm going to record the podcast. You guys tune into the uh, to the Better Take podcast dropping um, next Monday or whatever Monday um, it is whenever you guys watch this video. I'm going to be discussing the gym. I'm going to be discussing that like more in depth. I'm going to have a full review over the USAPL Raw Nationals. Uh, and then we're also just going to talk about a lot of other topics. So anyways, thank you guys for tuning into today's video. Like always, if you guys like today's video, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Get better today. I'm out.